Okay, here's how I learned to program, all right? Up through about the fifth grade, I, I, you know, I would go to grade school. I was not very happy in school, but I was like excited about math. I really liked math class and whatever. And then, or no, up through sixth grade. And then in seventh grade, seventh grade, sixth grade? Sixth grade, I think, um, we had our first computer class and I just loved it, right? And it was a super, I don't even remember that much of what we did in the computer class because it was really um, elementary. It was Commodore VIC 20s and they all shared one floppy disk drive. So at the beginning and the end of the class, the teacher had to go push one. Uh, it's like a giant, a bunch of physical toggle buttons and push one to connect computer one to the floppy drive and then you could load your program and then push two to connect computer two to the floppy drive and you could load your, so a lot of the class time was wasted on that, right? Um, but it was very straightforward. It was like, you type these commands in the basic programming language and then these things happen, right? It was a very simple, here's cause and effect, right? It was very not dogmatic, let's say. It was very not ideological. Um, then my parents saw how much I was into computers and they bought a computer for home. And I was just glued to that thing every night after school for like years. Right. And the first, uh, when you bought a book or, or when you bought a computer at Radio Shack, right, that was just, they, that was the store they knew where to get a computer. They got a TRS-80 color computer which was a pretty good computer. It wasn't as popular as the Commodore 64, but it was, it was nice. Uh, and they had little books there about how to program the TRS-80 color computer. And those were great. You could blow through them at your own pace. And they were also very straightforward. Here's a command. Here's what it does. Here's an example of what you might do with it, right? Here's an exercise on how to expand your ability of what you might be able to do. And I just, plowed through those. And at the end of those, I knew how to program. I mean, up to the standards of the day, not compared to today, right? Um, but like I could write non-trivial programs on a home computer, you know, that were exciting and interesting and all that. And there was no BS involved in any of that. And it just, it's, uh, it was very direct. Um, and you even toward the end of those books started learning some actual, because you're in basic most of the time, but eventually it's like, hey, you know, there's some registers that you can poke to control things like, you know, how the video chip uh, picks which colors should be up or whatever, right? And so you start learning how the machine actually works. Um, so all that stuff was really great and it's just not like that now. And so I feel bad for people who wanna to learn to program because everything that's being shown to them sucks. <laughs> like, it's all terrible. It wasn't terrible when I was learning, right? There was a lot of stuff that was less convenient. Um, programming in basic without a text editor was not that convenient, but There also was a way in which it wasn't crappy in the modern way that everything is crappy. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't. I feel bad for people learning today because they don't have good examples, and that's that's one reason why I rant, because people need good examples, or else they're just going to think this is what programming is, and that's just that's pretty bad, right?